He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole wide world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hand. He's got you and me, brother. In his hands, he's got you and me, sister. In his hands, he's got you and me, family. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. Sing it, y'all. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole wide world in his hands. He's got the whole world. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. You know what? He's got the little bitty babies. In his hand, he's got the little bitty babies. In his hand, he's got the little bitty babies. In his hand, he's got the whole world in his hand. Sing it, y'all. He's got the whole world. In his hands, he's got the whole wide world. In his hands, he's got the whole world. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. Check it up. He's got the whole world. In his hands, he's got the whole wide world. In his hands, he's got the whole world. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. Yeah, 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 God. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the World Channel, Brother Ricky Gracious Host. And today we're going to be talking about the capacity of God, <clears throat> how the God is limitless, too high to go over, too wide to go around, too low to go up under. But I want to talk to you about how to tap into the limitlessness of God, the resources of God. So let's get straight to the scriptures and let's talk about who God is. And then let's uh, talk about how that we can tap into his capacity to expand our capacity. The prayer of Jabez, is, he said, he said, oh Lord, that thou would enlarge my territory. In other words, Lord, if you could expand my capacity to be able to have an impact on the sons and daughters of men, that's my prayer. Is that your prayer today for expansion? I said, is that your prayer? Expansion. Put expansion in the chat. If you came here this morning to expand your life, put expansion in the chat. If you came here this morning to expand your life. Good morning, Brother Eddie. Good morning to you, Berlin. Good morning to you, Trina. Good morning to you, uh, Courtney. Good morning to you, Monique. Um, good morning to you, Harold. Good morning to you, Asala. Uh, good morning uh, to you, uh, Get Boy. Good morning to you. <laughs> it's a cold name, Get Boy. <laughs> All right, put expansion in the chat. If you all are interested in your life being expanded today, is that why you came here? Is that, is that your point of listening in today? Do you want to enlarge your territory and expand your capacity, your ability to be able to get things done at the highest levels? Well, I want, I want to suggest to us that we start tapping into God who what has all the resources in the world. I'm amazed at people. I'm like, you want more, right? They're like, yeah, I want more. I say, so if you want more, why are you going to people who have less? They like, I don't get what you're saying, Ricky. I'm like, who do you spend your time trying to expand and enlarge your territory, kicking it with? I mean, who is it that you are having conversations with and engaged in activities with? Do they have more than what you have? They're like, well, no, you know, I'm always trying to help somebody, Rick. I'm like, okay, all right, you're trying to help somebody. But how can you help somebody if the lion's share of your time is spent with people who have less than what you have? Are you hearing what I'm saying? In order for you to be able to help somebody, you got to go to a source that has more than what you currently have, is capable of more than what you currently are capable of, so that you can what? Enlarge your territory. Then you can help the people who have less than what it is that you have. I'm afraid that we're doing things backwards. I'm afraid that we have, and I believe this with good intentions too. I believe that because I hear it all the time from people being a wealth coach and talking to people about money on a regular basis and their businesses and what it is that you know, what their goals and aspirations are. When I ask people, um, you know, so how are you? They say, I just want to be a blessing, Brother Rick. I'm like, good. I want to be one too. 
They're like, you know what? I don't even, money is not even an object to me. I'm like, oh, uh, 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 hold it, hold it right there, hold it right there. First of all, money is a good motivation, okay? It's one of the purest motivations in the world. And stop acting like you don't want no money. And stop acting like you're happy being broke. You're not happy being broke. And you're not happy being in need all the time. I know you're not happy with people around you who need something and you're not able to help supply it. I know you're not happy with that. So that means that stop, stop with this stuff. All right. About, you know, money don't really mean anything. I'm not really that interested in money. Stop with the fake. That's that fake humility. It ain't even necessary. Don't be an unnecessary liar. OK, just this is the reality of life and that if you're going to help somebody. You need some money. All right. If you're going to help somebody, you need good health. If you're going to help somebody. You need some wisdom. All right. So God got plenty of it. He got plenty of what? Health, wealth and wisdom. Plenty of it. And I'm going to show you, prove it to you out the Bible, how God has everything that you could possibly want. And he has more of it <clears throat> than you can possibly get your hands on. Listen to me. God don't run out of stuff. Are you listening to me? Why would you talk to somebody and you're having a conversation with them and they half listen to you? Why? Because they thinking you're trying to get what they got. They ain't even paying you no attention. They're not even really in the conversation because in their mind, they're thinking you're going to deplete them of their resources. Well, God is not like that. When you talk to God and you start asking God for things and you start inquiring of God how to do things, God is never going to run out of nothing. I mean, he's got enough for everybody clear across the world that's ever been born. Everybody is going to ever be born. And then when everybody gone, he still got resources left. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God is limitless. Are you digging what I'm saying? So let's see what the scripture got to say about God. And let's go straight to the book of, uh, let's see here. Let's go to the book of Ephesians chapter three, verse number 18 through 21. They say that we may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and the length and the depth and the height and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge that she might be filled with all the fullness of God. Woo! Wow, what a, way to, what a way to kick it off, all right? Filled with the fullness of God, all right? What is the depth, the height, the weight, the length of God? Can you measure God? God said, man, I'm from everlasting to everlasting. He said, I am immeasurable. You can't measure me. He said, but what you can do is that you can tap into my resources. So the first thing I want us to understand is, hey, let's change the resources that we go to because the reason that you have limited resources is because you're going to sources that have limited resources and you're making those sources what the object of your affection and those subjects the object of your focus don't focus on things that have a limit to them focus on the entity that has no limits and then what you can enlarge your territory and, and increase your capacity to be able to do things. You're going to hear me talk a lot about capacity this year. The Lord blessed me to see the whole year and we all hanging out around here. Why? Because that's our job every single day. What? I want to be able to do more than I was able to do yesterday. I want to be able to contribute more than I was able to contribute yesterday. I want to be more of a blessing to people today than I was yesterday, which means that yesterday's capacity is not going to work. Why? I cannot be, I can my capabilities got to be better today than they were yesterday. I'm going to work on me feverishly. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And since I got access to unlimited resources, that's where I'm going to spend my time at. I'm going to spend my time at the resource store. What? God's capacity. Because he is limitless. He don't get no attitude with you when you ask him for something. Why? Because he ain't thinking, man, you're trying to deplete me. People get an attitude when you ask him for things. Why? Because they're like, man, here you come again. You know, I gave you five dollars last week. Here you come again. What you want? Five dollars more again? What you trying to do? You trying to break me? All right. Why? Because people got what? Limited resources. So when you go to people in the back of their mind, they like, OK, it's not like I'm greedy. It's not like I don't want to help you and stuff. But you know what, player? You coming? you know, where you come in, you, you're trying to trying to break me. You know, I'm going to be end up in a soup line just like you. So the answer this week to you is no, go get it on. Go get it the best way you can. All right. Because you ain't going to milk me and take everything I got. And you can understand a human being feeling that way. Excuse me. Why? Because humans have limited resources, but not God. God don't have limited resources, so he don't have that attitude. So I just can't understand for the life of me how a person wants the best of life and won't go to the best to get it. I just don't understand it. You want to be if you want to be the best singer in the world, 
then go to the person who what? Trains the best singers in the world. If you want to be the best tennis player in the world, then it goes to who? Go to the person who trains the best tennis players in the world. If you want to be the best pianist in the world, what the heck? Go to the person that trains the best pianist in the world. If you want to be the best baseball player in the world, then go to people who train the best baseball players in the world. If you want to be the best nurse in the world, then go to the institute that trains the best nurses in the world. I mean, if you had a choice of whatever field you're in in life right now, if you had a choice about going to the best to get trained in that field and nurtured in that field to expand your territory, then I'm sure you would all, I'm sure every last one of you would choose the best. All right. Okay. So let's use the same common sense when it comes down to God. God has what? Unlimited resources. So we should go to him to get the best that we can possibly get so that we won't be mediocre and okay and all right and, and, and doing a pretty good, but we'll be spectacular in whatever it is that we're doing. Why? Because we got it straight from the source. Are you hearing me? I'm, I'm often talking to people in business and they be trying to play me off. I'd be like, listen, I do not, I need to speak to the source. Okay. I appreciate you, but you have told me, you said out your own mouth, you can't help me. Why? Because you don't have the resources to be so, to do so. Sometimes they lie and you'll find out quick when you start wanting to talk to the source. I was just in a hotel last week and I said, I want to stay until 1.30 because I got classes to teach. She said, I can't help you. All right. I said, OK, where's your manager? Give me the source. She said, the manager isn't here. I said, send him a message and tell him one of your good clients who spends tens of thousands of dollars with you all a year that he wants to he wants to stay until 1.30. And, and then let him tell me what's going on. That's the source, right? I'm not accepting your answer because you're not the source. You, you can't expand my capacity to its fullest limits because you don't have the power to be able to do it. So I'm not mad at you. I just don't want to waste no more time talking to you. Why? Because the king's business requires haste. Anybody got no time to be playing games? All right. So if you can't help me, baby, give me somebody who can. So she said, I'm sorry. I can't talk to him and I can't help you. I said, I'm not happy with that decision. I said, so I tell you what, you enjoy the rest of your afternoon. I'll be contacting the people that you work for and we'll see what they got to say about your behavior today because you're not using good judgment. All right. And you have the you absolutely have the ability to change this room and to give me the time I'm requesting because it's not a big deal. All right. But if you want to make a big deal out of it. OK, why? I'm going to the source. Are you hearing me? I want my fullest capacity. I want to be treated right. I spend hundreds. Thousands of dollars with y'all, tens of thousands of dollars with y'all. It's not a big request. OK, so you enjoy the rest of the afternoon. That phone rang a few minutes later. Now, sir, uh, we, I was able to get that approved. I'm like, no kidding. All right. And, um, and everything's OK now. You can stay to one, like stay to two o'clock instead of one thirty. Why? Listen, work to your fullest capacity. Are you hearing me? Act like you ain't got no more time to waste. Stop playing games with people and let them give you the run around and stuff and let them know I got the same attitude with you that I have towards God. God has already told me that I got everything that pertains to the fullness of God is available to me. So if the fullness of God is available to me, I'm going to behave like a person who does what? Who presses the envelope to the max. Why? So I can get the most out of my life because I, you know, I don't know how long I'm going to be around here, but I know I know one thing. I'm not going to die until I die. I'm going to live until I die. All right. Some people, they, they've been dead for 35 years. They just ain't got buried yet. Now you hear what I'm saying? Why? Because they won't do it. They won't stretch out on the capacity of God. See, when you stretch out on the capacity of God, it'll make you treat, it'll make you accept less foolishness out of people. Why? Because you're like, no, 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 no. I've been in, me and God got a relationship. And the way, the way to me and God working this thing out is that he gives me full access to what he has. So I'm a child of God. So when I come into a room, I want full access to everything in this room. OK, I got the same attitude, with y'all. I got towards God. Why? Because I'm going to give you full access to me. I'm not going to hold out on you. If I'm if I came here to serve you, then you're going to get everything I got. When I leave, when I get through with you, then I'm just going to be tired, so tired. All I got to do is go to sleep. Why? Because I gave everything I had. I gave you my full capacity. I'm not going to come in and, uh, and play games with you. All right. And, and play uh, titty wings with you. And this is what this is what God is telling all of us. He's like, y'all ain't tapping into me the way that you could because you overwhelmed by your problems. So when your problems come up, you forget the fact that I'm just standing right here like I got all that covered, all of that, all of that covered. Why? The only way that a problem can persist is that you didn't go to the source to get rid of it. That's the only way problems can persist. Are you thinking what I'm saying? So that's the first thing. So 
so first, so it's three things about God that I want to talk about as capacity. First of all, it's the fullness of God. That's what the capacity is. All right. And I want you to understand his capacity concerning health. All right. First thing about God is that God, he don't never sleep. He don't never slumber. He ain't never tired. So you cannot wear God out. All right. When the Bible, it's just like praying to God, for example. And the Bible says, man, consider the woman who went to the unjust judge. And she was like, listen, I need you to take care of my son because my son is in trouble. And, and they trying to throw the book at him. So the judge like, I don't want to be bothered. She said, like, your honor, your honor, your honor, you know, and all, with all due respect, my son, they trying to throw the book at him. He's like, girl, I'm going to be bothered with you. Boy, you're a little heathen son. He, he probably deserved to go to jail. Your honor, I'm asking for mercy. I'm like, she bugged the mess out of the unjust judge. Who don't, he, the Bible says he didn't fear God or man. He didn't care. He said, but this woman is nagging the mess out of me. He said, so you know what? I'm just going to go ahead on and grant her her request. Why? Because she's nagging the mess out of me. And then this is the Bible talking to you. It's Jesus teaching us. And he said, you know what? He said, God is really just. He said, if the unjust judge can get worn out because a person keep coming, he's saying, and what about God? Who got, who don't sleep or slumber? Let me show you what the Bible said about God. He ain't even tired. So you can't even wear God out. He said, watch this. This is Psalms 121. And the Bible says, I will lift up mine eyes into the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Now you hear what I'm saying? Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall not sleep or slumber. A uh, slumber or sleep. Ain't y'all glad to know that? I said, ain't you got, you remember when uh, when Elijah was up in the hill with the fake prophets, the prophets of Baal? And they was calling on their fake God. He said, what's wrong with him? He said, maybe he's asleep. Or maybe on a vacation, you know, or maybe just chilling like a villain, you know, could be in the middle of the afternoon. He, he might have just had a meal and I got to take a little nap. I don't know about y'all, but in the middle of a uh, child, like that's a word, child, C-H-A-L-L, child. I don't know about y'all, but <laughs> I don't know about y'all, but in the middle of the afternoon, I don't know what they put in this food these days, but I go out to go out to have lunch and I'm all energetic and full of life. And I take three bites of that lunch. And man, I got to go someplace and lay down. I'm like almost delirious. I'm like, they got to be drugging this food. How the heck I get so sleepy in the middle of the day and I rested all night and I'm full of energy. Don't drink, don't smoke, don't get high, work out, drink water, take um, all kind of antibody, all kind of stuff. And then go eat some food and got to fall out in the middle of the day. I'm like, man, it's the blood of Jesus. The devil is a lie. So, uh, but God ain't like that. You know, God, he don't eat no meal. And in the middle of the day, you call on God and he like, and got to give you an answering service. You know, you're like, hey, Lord, I'm right here in the middle of some serious trouble. I need some real help. All right. And God sleep. Hey, look, Lord, Lord. Hello. Um, this is one nine hundred. Praise the Lord. Uh, please leave your message at the sound of the tone. And Jesus will get back to you soon. You know, you're on this afternoon nap. Why are you tripping in the first place? You don't get no messages like that from God. Why? Because the Bible says, I will look towards the hills from whence cometh my help. He said, why? Because my help is coming from the Lord. He said, my God, he said, he don't sleep or he don't slumber. He don't never take vacations or nothing. He's available 24 hours a day. I'm talking about the capacity of God today and why we need to tap into it. Because I believe we get so worn out by human behavior until we start acting like God is just another human. Why? Because we get, because we call people and they be asleep. I mean, I was talking to one of my homies on the phone and he fell asleep on me in the middle of the conversation. I'm like, hey, 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 doc, you know what I was saying? I'm, I'm going in, man. You know, man, man, that's just things. I just really need some, man. You know what I'm saying, bro? You know what I'm saying, bro? I'm like, me, Groy, did he just fall asleep on me in the middle of the conversation? I'm like, bro, I'm trying to pull my heart out. What's going on around here? Thank God. That ain't God ain't like that. God ain't got sleep apnea. Are you hearing me? God does not wear a mask to go to bed at night. Are you listening to me? God don't lose. He don't need no sleep none of the time. Do you know who we dealing around dealing with around here? We dealing with a 24-7 God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you believe God is 24-7, put it in the chat. 24 slash 7. If that's the God you serve. I don't know about your God, but I got a 24-7 God. All right. He don't never get tired. He's in great shape. Tremendous help. I'm talking about the capacity of God today. Why? Because God is concerned with three things, among, among other things with us. He's concerned about our health, our wealth, and um, our health and our wealth. 
that he's concerned about our wisdom, our health, our wealth, and our wisdom. He wants us to be healthy, wealthy, and wise. Those are the three things that God, three other things that God wants us to have. So how in the world God going to help us be healthy if he ain't healthy? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Stop going to people for what they ain't got. How are you going to get what you need from somebody who ain't got what you need? They ain't got it. They can't give it to you. How, why in the world would you go to somebody talking about, hey, man, I need a hundred bucks. You know they're a $5 person? Are you hearing me? Hey, man, I need a hundred dollars. Well, you're going to have to go 20 times if you're going to $5 people. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Why should you go 20 times to $5 people when you can go one time to the source and get it all at one time and stop wasting so much doggone time? Are you hearing me? We ain't got no time to waste and we don't have no health to waste either. So thank God that he's a healthy God. He's a healthy God. Listen, you can't take your problems to an unhealthy entity. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because why? They can't hear what you're saying. It's hard for a person to hear you when they sleep. It's hard for a person to hear you when they're slumbering. It's hard for a person to hear you when they more hurt mentally and physically than you are. And you're having a conversation with that person and they hit like a 60 mile an hour fastball. They ain't got it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? They ain't got it like that. God got it like that. He don't sleep. He don't slumber. Let me tell you something else about God. But I love the Psalm 121st Psalm. He said, the Lord is thy keeper and the Lord is thy shade upon the right hand. Listen, if you're going to be healthy, you need some shade. How you doing what I'm saying? You're saying, what's shade, Ricky? You need some covering if you're going to be healthy. Why? Because it's hot out here in these streets. That's why. And you, dig and you need some shelter. You need some. You need somebody that can do what? That, that has the capacity to be able to cover you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It don't make, listen, you're not going to go out into the street, to these streets and don't get caught in the hot blazing sun of the uh, the, the vicissitudes of life. Ain't, ain't nothing happening. All of us, the sun going to beat down on us like you wouldn't believe is life. Are you hearing me? So ain't no getting out of that. So there ain't no question about whether you're going to go out into a hot blazing sun. But if you're going to be healthy, mentally healthy and physically healthy, then you're going to have to have a healthy God doing what? Covering you. And he said, the Lord, my God is my health and my strength. He said, he don't sleep, he don't slumber and he's my shade. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God put shade on you. Are you do you know why the sun, the, the heat of the day has not consumed you up until this point? It's because of what? The protection that you have. The sun that you have, the shade that you have from the sun, because the sun ain't going nowhere. I'm telling you, the heat of the day ain't going nowhere. Matter of fact, don't even worry about that. So you know what? Hey, life, come on, life. Come on, life. I know you're coming at me anyway. So what? I'm ready. Turn up the heat. Turn up the heat. Turn up the heat. Why? Because I got an amazing shade. Are you hearing what I am? Amazing shade. Just put AS in the chat if you know God is your shade. He's some amazing shade. Amazing shade <laughs> has kept me from that hot sun. Amazing shade, Lord. What man are protecting me from everything? Amazing shade. How you think what I'm saying? He the one, he the reason why you're healthy. He the reason why you're alive. He the reason why you got any sense. He the reason why you got any mental capacity and any physical capacity because he's your amazing shade. Are you picking up what I'm putting down? He's, I'm talking about he's shade from the hot, blistering sun. He was my amazing shade when some cats broke in my house at two o'clock in the morning. I ain't know who they was. I'm thinking of some, some more crackheads need some help in the neighborhood. Bam! Knock me on the ground. Before I know it, I'm tied up with duct tape. He got a pillow over my head. I'm like, my God, they're talking about the hot sun out. The hot sun is out. You know when they put a pillow over your head, it's time to blow your brains out. That's why they put pillows over your head. When they were trying to make me comfortable, you know, tie me up with duct tape. Obviously, you ain't concerned about my comfort, but something must have happened. Something must have happened. Something. Must, I started praying for them cats. I said, Lord, if they finna kill me, forgive them. I said, and if I done done anything scandalous, forgive me. Are you hearing me? You know what God provided? Some amazing shade. They couldn't even pull the trigger. You know what they did? They got up and left and left me in the house. I'm talking about I can identify him and left me. He had some little fake mask on, but I can identify him. He said, Dad, Ricky, why is people breaking in your house? You ain't got to be doing nothing for nobody breaking in your house. And somebody your house got broken to last night and they history right now. Why? Because they didn't have no shade in the crib. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? All right. I ain't here, but, but, but nothing but the grace of God. And you here because of the grace of God too, baby, because God put so much shade on you. You don't have so much shade on you that you don't even know about. 
You didn't ask so many times. You you was one second away from being dead and don't even know it. One second away from being maimed and don't even know it. One second away from being sick and never recovering and don't even know it. Why? Because of the amazing shade of God. Amazing shade. I know it's, I know a shade is amazing. That's why I give him the girl, give him the glory, and give him the praise on a regular everyday basis. Why? Because I don't care what nobody thinks. I'm like, I know the only reason I'm alive is because of the amazing shade. Are you hearing me? So he said, he's my shade, all right? He's my right hand. What else he say about God? Help, all right? Because you want some good help. You need a healthy God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? No, sir, no sick God. Serve a God that don't never sleep, don't no slumber, that'll keep you and it'll be your shade upon your right hand. He said, the sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. Woo! I'm talking about the capacity of God today. I'm sorry. Let me let me get more calm. All right. Woo! I'm talking about the capacity of God today. Are you hearing me? He said, man, he said, God keeping you day and night. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Day and night. Are you hearing? Ain't nobody broken your crib last night, right? That's because God was your amazing shade. Are you digging what I'm saying? Ain't nobody breaking your crib this morning? That's because God is your amazing shade. Did you have some haters last night? Wow, they can't get through to you. Why? Because God is your amazing shade. You had some haters this morning? Ah, they can't get to you. Why? Because God is your amazing shade. He say what? He say he take care of me day. He say like the sun can't melt me in the day and the moon can't beat me down in the night. Why? Because God, he's my amazing shade, my helper and my protection. Now you think what I'm saying? Watch and let me tell you one more thing you got to say, because God is a healthy God. And he keep you healthy too. All right. His capacity. His capacity. The first thing about capacity we're talking about is your health. And God's health will make sure that you're healthy. You say, the Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. So let's break down that word. The Lord shall preserve. What, is pre what does preserve mean? It means he's going to pre-serve you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Pre-serve you. Are you digging what I'm talking about? See, God is a proactive God. That's what his capacity is. See, tap into the capacity of God. Why? Because God will pre-serve you. You say, what are you talking about, Brother Ricky? I'm talking about he'll do things in advance that already took care of your situation before the situation even take place. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? God, that's how God, you got to understand God. So you're used to dealing with people, human beings who are in time. God is not in time. God created time. God is on the outside of time. So God already knew what's going to happen to you before it happened to you. You remember Jesus was talking to some guys and they started talking and Jesus said, yeah, he could hear their thoughts. Why? Because the Bible said, God know our thoughts before they even before we even know our thoughts. He said, God know our thoughts are far off. So before we even know them, God know them. So what God does, he pre-serves us. In other words, out of all our situations and everything that we got to go through, God had already made a way before the situation even take place. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He always already he said there's no temptation taking man but such as but there's no temptation taking you but such as is common a man but God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you are able but will with the temptation make a way to escape that you might be what able to bear it why because he pre served that's preservation in other words you are pre served you know what that's why the, uh, the people in this kingdom that's why we behave the way we behave why because we know we pre served or preserved. That's why we walk into what? Dangerous places. That's why we do what? Take risks. That's why we do what? Make it rain like a hurricane. That's why we do what? That's why we go forth what? Conquering and to conquer. Why? Because we know we are pre-served. We know God had already been down that street. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God had already been down this street, sent scouts out in front of us, gave us the okay, and said, now go kick butt and take names. All right? How do we know? Take, take, take Joshua and Caleb. Two cats who what was pre-served. God told him what? He said, before y'all even go over here into the common land to spy it out, I already gave it to you. He said, I already gave you everything over there. I done already pre-served you. All right. So just go over there and take now take care of your business. Now, why? Because I already did it. Unfortunately, we had 10 cats who wasn't what? Pre-served. You dig what I'm saying? So God didn't pre-serve them. He did what? He observed them. He said, these marks ain't going nowhere. Let me ask you a question. Are you pre-served or are you being observed? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because you're going to be out-served if you observe. Because God says, blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel, that uh, that heareth not the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of the sinner, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. People who sit in the seat of the scornful, they're not pre-served. Why? Because they ain't doing nothing. Because they like, man, God ain't going to do nothing for me. 
right? I ain't got no faith in God. I ain't got no confidence in him. I don't believe in his capacity. I don't even believe in him. I'm, you know, I got this atheist attitude. You say, not me, brother Ricky. I ain't no atheist. I believe that there's a God in heaven and earth. I ain't talking about what you say you believe in your mind. I'm talking about how do you behave with your behavior? Because when you believe in God's capacity, then you do things in advance because you know he already advanced the victory. Now you dig what I'm saying? You ain't sitting around waiting on nobody to do nothing. You're sitting around waiting on nobody's permission and you got the capacity of God in your life. You're making it rain like a hurricane. Why? You don't need nobody's permission. Now you dig what I'm saying? Why? Because you've been pre-served. Are you listening to me? That's why you're so cool. Why everybody else acting the fool? That's why you're so cool. Why everybody else acting the fool, baby? All right. Paul was a pre-served man. Are you listening to me? How do we know that? Because he was, they was getting ready to go on a boat. And, um, and he said, listen, we shouldn't get on this boat. This is the 27th chapter of Acts because it's going to be trouble in Gotham, baby. All right. And God had already told me, you don't want to go down here. It's going to be a tsunami. All right. They, they frantic, though, because they don't know nothing about the God of heaven and earth. They got fake gods. All right. They guys go to sleep. They guys retarded. They guys don't even exist. They don't even know how to get no real weather forecast. They don't even know what's going on. You dig what I'm saying? Paul is a weatherman, a real weatherman. He's like, listen, it's going to be a tsunami up here because the angel of the Lord already came and told me. All right. They're like, oh, man, no, we don't know what you're talking about. Let's ride. So they get out there and they start getting the ship and they go forward. Man, what happened? Whoosh. Ah, whoosh. Ah, whoosh. Ah. Wind started coming from everywhere. Tearing the ship up. Man, they started. They started. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Ah. But they all scared as hell. Why? Because they think they're going to die. That's why. Everything is done. All Paul down, you know, he just sitting in the boat like it ain't no it ain't no big deal. They like, hey man, what you doing? Man, you been filing your fingernails, man. This ain't the nail shop. What's going on with you, player? They say you better call out to your God or something. All right. Paul said, I told y'all before we left. He said, brother, I told y'all there was gonna be some trouble out here. I told y'all not to sell. He said, but now let me tell you something else. God done already told me everything's okay. So everybody just chill out, just stay in the boat. They like stay in the boat. Stay in the boat. They like, man, you gotta be crazy, man. Man, we throwing everything overboard, including you. You don't hear me stop talking crazy. Paul, like, man, just chill, player. Just chill out, man. Y'all tripping. All right, stop tripping. All right, calm down. All right, homie, calm down. Why, I can got why? Why could Paul be so calm? Cause he was pre-served. God had already told him. I already took care of that before you left. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Everybody stayed in that boat and nobody died. Why? Because you pre-served. Let me tell you something. One reason why God saved you and changed you is so you can help pre-serve your family and friends because they they panicking. You know, they they when, when the stuff hit the fan, they don't know what to do. Why? Because they don't know this God, the God that you serve. They don't know. Him. They don't understand. Him. They don't understand that they that you. That's why you're so calm in the middle of the storm. You need to be able to calm somebody else down. Now you hearing me? Tap into the fullness of God's health. The reason people ain't healthy is because they anxious as all get up. What? High blood pressure, sugar, diabetes, one eye and one leg, call her Eileen, and big trouble. Why? Why? Because they ain't got no peace. They ain't got no assurance that everything's going to be okay. All right. But when you tap into what? The capacity of God, you understand that God is healthy. And what? Because he's healthy, he's able to do what? Pre serve me because he is what? Pre served. And he's doing what? Some pre-serving today. All right. Who wants to be pre-served today? If you want to be pre-served today, put a one in a chat. All right. If you want to be pre-served, do you want to start knowing what's going on before it even go down? I say, do you want to start knowing what I'm talking about being pre-served, baby? Ain't you tired of guessing and wondering and hoping and wishing? Don't you want some, don't you need some, what, what, for God to talk to you before everybody else find out what's going on? I said, if you want to be pre-served, put a one in the chat. I don't know about y'all, but I'm, I love getting my news straight from God. I'm, uh, I'll be getting my stuff straight from God. That's why I don't watch Channel 7 and Channel 5 and ABC and NBC and CNB. I don't waste my time on that crap. I'm like, y'all late to the party, player. God already told me what was happening way before y'all even set up, set y'all cameras up today. Y'all late to the party. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And it's time for y'all to what? Get some peace up in here. How are you going to have some peace if you don't know what's going on? You need, you need to know what's going on to have some peace. And God will what? Pre-serve you. And let you know, baby, everything is going to be all right. He's coming back like he said he would. I said now everything is going to be all right. He's coming back. Ow. 
like he said he won. He's given peace, joy, and happiness. He's coming back loud and boom, boom. Like he said he won. Say it, everybody. Everything is going to be all right. He, you know why? You know why everything going to be all right? Because everything is already all right. <laughs> if everything already all right, you know it's going to be all right. Why? God will pre-serve you. I was coming home from doing a real estate deal and uh, just made a check, $11,000 check. I was happy. I was like, praise the Lord, 11 grand. <laughs> Let's go home and celebrate. I was on my way to the crib. My my car went out on me. I was like, click, click, click. Engine went out. I was like, Lord, have mercy. All right. So I just called the dude up and said, hey, man, my engine out. Told the car on over to him. You say, why are you smiling so much, Brother Ricky? I'm smiling. Why? Because I was pre-served. But God served me the 11 grand before the engine went out. Are you hearing me? I wasn't complaining about no engine. I was happy I had the money. Man, I paid for the engine and had plenty of change left. Are you dig what I'm saying? When you've been pre-served, God already see your situation before it even take place. And what? Got a ram in the bush, baby. Got your stuff taken care of already. That's the God I'm talking about today. I'm talking about he'll keep you healthy. He'll keep your mind right. Why? Because he will pre-serve you. Abraham got pre-served. Y'all remember Abraham? He said, man, y'all stay here while me and the lad go up into the mountain to worship, going up to chop his son's head off. He called it worship. Lord have mercy. You're talking about a good attitude. He's, he said, and we'll be back. He said, man, me and the boy be coming back. He got a knife in one hand and he got some wood in the other hand about to chop his son's head off. And he and he let the people know we'll be back. Why? Because he know he was pre-served. Why? God already told him. He said, what? He said, accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead. That's why the Bible says Abraham who was imputed unto him for righteousness. Because he said, man, if God gave me a boy when I'm 100 years old, because it definitely wasn't me. Abraham ain't stupid. He had a he had this boy when he was 100 years old. You know, it ain't no Viagra in the world to give you no son when you're 100 years old. You know that. You know, it wasn't nothing but God that gave him that kind of power. So he's like the same guy who gave me the power to have a baby at 100 years old. If I kill the baby, he'll raise him up again from the dead. And he meant it. Why? Because God had pre-served him, but God didn't show the pre-serving until he got the knife all the way in the air. He got the knife in the air, coming down, about to chop Isaac's head. Isaac said, hey, Pops. Pops! He said, I see the wood. Ah, I see the fire. He said, whoo! He said, but where? And I see that big old knife you got too, but Lord have mercy. Where's the sacrifice? Let me tell you something. God is so awesome until he pre serve you and your next generation. Are you hearing what I'm saying? pre serve you because he's a God of amazing capacity. Are you listening to what I'm telling you? So just because you're going through a lot of tests and trials don't mean you ain't been pre served In fact, it's just proof that you've been pre served because ain't nobody going no place without tests and trials. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God through it all. Lord, through it all, I've learned to depend upon his word. Man, Abraham said, you know what? I'm about to come down on you, son. Oh, God said, hold it. Hold up, Abe. Abe, hold up. He said, check out. Look over there in that bush. He said, I got a ram in the bush. He said, don't do your child no harm. He said, now I know I'm about to blow you up. He said, I was charged up before you came up here on the mountain, but now I'm supercharged. He said, the whole world will know about you, Abraham, but eternity, you're going to have the coldest promise ever given to a person, all right? Posterity, I'm about to blow your family up from generation to generation, from everlasting to everlasting. Ain't, ain't going to never be nobody that's broken your career, all right, dude? I'm going to take care of you forever. Why? Because you got to, because you what? I pre-served you. Because why? Because you believe me. Listen, if you want to be pre-served, all you got to do is just start tapping into the unlimited resources of God and let him pre-serve you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Look, it's 2024. All right. There's a bunch of stuff going to happen this year. You need to know ahead of time what to do. You need to know what? You need to have a ram in the bush waiting because you're going to have to take some risks to get out here in 2024 and get paid. 
So if you're gonna get paid, that means you gotta be pre-served. You gotta be, you got to have the attitude that I'm about to go out here and get it. Why? Because I already know it's mine. I already know it's mine. All right. Give me my stuff. What you doing out here with my stuff? You better, you better up my stuff. Are you hearing me? Why? Because my God had already told me it's mine. That's why. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Hey, go for yours. Or like they say in the hood, go for yours. All right. Why? Because you've been pre-served. God had already took care of that. You say, but I don't know, Ricky. Going up that mountain, looking at that knife, thinking about, man, I got to tie my own head. We ain't going through what Abraham was going through. Uh, most of us, we worried about getting on here and going live, worried about what some uh, uh, nickel uh, project relocated Negro got to say about you going live. You worried about some little monkey stuff. I ain't even got nothing to do with nothing. Don't want to speak in front of people. And what they think about you and all. I'm like, you've been pre-served. Ain't, can't nobody do nothing with you. You a bad mama jamma. You a cold-blooded brother. You got it going on to the breaking down. You ain't new here. You grew here. You get out without a frown. You a member of the kingdom, baby. Are you hearing me? You better give God some glory up in here. Give him some glory up in here. Give him some glory up in here. Give him some glory. Give him some glory up in here. We ain't taking no prisoners around here. We on our way to what? Conquering and to conquer. Why? Because we got good help physical health, mental health. Why? Because our God has preserved us. And whatever you do, give him the credit. All right, let's go on to the next thing. All right, come on. I feel like I hear your son kisses. I feel like giving him some glory up in there too. I feel like taking the shackles off my feet so I can dance. All right, I'm sorry. No, I ain't. I ain't sorry. Let me stop apologizing. Let's go. All right, let's go. Uh, so number two, you need some full wealth. So we got full health. Now you need some full wealth. All right. So what does the Bible say about full wealth? Let's talk about it for a second. All right. So here's God. Let me go to the scriptures. What, what God got to say about his wealth. OK, let me hear, talk to you about the wealth of God, how much wealth he got. All right. So here's the Lord testifying about his wealth. Well, here's David talking about God. And uh, David is talking about how wealthy God is. All right. So he says the earth is the Lord's. Excuse me. He says and the fullness thereof and they that dwell therein. All right. All right. So how much money God got? OK. All right. What what I'm talking about wealth. Now. All right. So how much money God got? All right. How much gold does God have? All right. How much silver does God have? I mean, how many rubies uh, is God capable of producing? I mean, come on now. Does God have a problem at the diamond shop? All right. What you thought Kay's jeweler had it going on? What Jared? I got it from what Jared? You ain't seen no diamonds like the diamonds God got. Are you hearing me? I'm sure, absolutely certain that there are diamonds, that, mines that have still not been discovered. Why? Because God's so rich. Can't nobody catch up with God money. Are you hearing me? Why in the world would you not, for money and wealth, why in the world would you go to any other source when God got it all, baby? He says the earth. He just, he just wound it all up. He said, now the gold, the silver, the bronze, all right, the bitcoins, okay, the uh, that little fake money y'all carry around, that little fake money. Then if you come to my classes, I teach you how that little money you got ain't nothing. I take you to a whole nother level about money. You come to my classes, I talk to y'all about that. But my point right now is that God got it all, baby, all right? And he got so much of it and so in such abundance, so rare emeralds, diamonds, golds. Gold. I mean, I mean the sharpest cut diamonds. Are you hearing? I'm talking about diamonds. You take one little look at them. You're like, oh, I need some shades on, baby. All right. Why? Because God got it like that. He said, listen, let me just break it down to you. He said, the earth is the Lord's and the what? Fullness thereof and all them that dwell therein. He said, it ain't nothing on earth God don't own. That's why my book is called what? That's why I taught y'all this book. Control everything. Control everything. Own nothing. You know why? Because you don't own nothing, no way. What? That's the craziest stuff I've ever heard in my life. People run around talking about what they own. I'm like, what? How much of it are you going to take with you? I'm like, I'm like, you need a calculator for that? All right. You ain't taking nothing, player. What? Because you don't own nothing. Why are you running around acting like you own stuff you don't own? Why don't you go to the source who does own everything and say, hey, Lord, you know what I want to do? I want to just tap into your resources so I can just manage some of what you own, all right? Ain't nobody around here no owner of nothing. We ain't nothing but managers. That's why the number one class you should take is money management. 
Why? Because you don't own no money and you might as well stop tripping, player. All right. Because you don't own nothing. You don't own the last breath you just took. Are you hearing me? Talk slick to God for more than a few seconds. Watch. You be talking about, you know what, man? I just want, I'm going to pop my collar. Pop my collar. Why? Because I own a boat. I own a, I own a jet. I own three. I own, I own three. I own, Excuse me, Lord. Can we can we turn it back around again? <clears throat> I'm managing three villas. <laughs> I'm managing four different car lots, and uh, I'm managing seventy two hundred, five hundred, three hundred fifty seven zillion dollars. I'm just a manager. <laughs> Why? Because if God wants his breath right now, then what all of us will do? What? Drop dead. I'm amazed at folks walking around. Are you so delusional? You don't know nothing. You know, they're on, the, on the last breath you just took, but God does. So why? So let's flip the script. Let's say, okay, Lord, since you own everything, I'm just going to bow down to that since the earth is yours and the fullness thereof. Can you teach me how to control the things that you give me the ability to manage? See, everybody running around trying to control or, or out of control because control is not even a person's aim. Ownership is a person's aim. I'm like, but you ain't even aiming at the right thing because you don't own nothing. So why don't you aim at the thing that you can do? Because God, he demands that you be what? Under control. That's why the Bible said, I keep under my body and I bring it up under subjection. Listen, anytime I preach to other people, I myself might be a castaway. In other words, don't be out of control, brother and sister. Don't be out of control. And your money, in order for you to get your, you, you are commanded to get, a, to get your paper straight. Are you hearing me? This wealth thing, God commands you to have some money. Why are you listening to me? God is not pleased that you're not having no money. Oh, no, 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 no. You know why? Because God is like, as wealthy as I am, and you broke, man, you got to be out of control. Hey, listen to me. You got to have your priorities mixed up. You must not know who I am. When I am the king of kings, the Lord of lords, I am the captain of the host, and I'm rich, baby. He said a cattle on a thousand hills belong to me. Let's finish. Let's finish. Let me finish telling you how rich God is. Maybe you don't know. All right. I can't take it for granted that you know. Maybe you don't know. Maybe you ain't read the Bible in the last 15, 20 years. All right. He said, uh, let me see. Uh, he said, uh, he had founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Wait a minute. What's, what's established? What does that mean? That means that it's settled. All right. He, the, what the earth is God's in the fullness thereof. So he established that. What does that mean? That means that ain't up for discussion. All right. This is not your earth. Not my earth. This is not your world. This is not my world. Talking about you act like it's yours. And that's why you ain't getting much of it. See, if you take your hands off of what don't belong to you, you'll be able to get your hands on everything that does belong to you. Let me run that by you one more time. I said, if you would take your hands off of what don't belong to you, then you and get your mind off of what don't belong to you, then you'll get everything that what does belong to you. All right. And what does belong to you is the management of financial resources. That's yours. All right. Why? Because the Bible says the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. That's yours. What? To manage. All right. Not to act like you own it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Why? Because people think they own stuff. They got a bad attitude. They got a mark attitude. They think they all that in a bag of chips. But a person who know they just passing through here for a few minutes. All right. <laughs> Excuse me. A person that know they passing through here for a few minutes. Oh, uh, they got they they get their stuff together. Why? They know that the, the point of this wealth is to manage it. And then to make sure what? That I train my kids and my grandkids so they won't be some knuckleheads running around here tricking this money out. Are you dig what I'm saying? Everybody who got money know that. Everybody who everybody in this kingdom who understands wealth and, and got a godly attitude about wealth, all of us understand we ain't doing nothing but what? Borrowing money from God and then managing the money. All right? That's all we're doing. We say, hey, Lord, just loan me that money so I can manage it. And then, Lord, in the managing, I'm going to train the kids so they can manage it too. Okay. And then we what? And they ain't going to train their kids so they can manage it too. And then what? They're going to train their kids so they can manage it too because it's not our money. Because we don't own nothing. It's your money. All right. It ain't even my life. I don't even own my own body, let alone my own money. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Once you start getting that vision of reality, then you'll do what? You'll be like, okay, Lord. So if you got that much money, the cattle on Thousand Hills belong to you, all the gold, all the silver, all the diamonds, everything. 
and I ain't got much of it, I must be some kind of tripe. All right. OK, that's what we ought to be doing. Why? Because somebody's irresponsible around here with all this money floating around, the quadrillions floating around here, and we ain't got our fair share of it, <clears throat> and, the, and the kingdom people on top of it. I'm amazed at how many saved people are broke. <clears throat> I'm like, yeah, you love God and all that. Praise the Lord. You got a good heart. Mm -hmm. You're a wonderful person. All right. And you got it together. Praise God. You know, yeah, I believe you really uh, in the will of God for your life. <clears throat> But why are you broke? I can't understand that. <clears throat> why are you dealing with the fullness of everything else, but you ain't dealing with the fullness of wealth? I mean, you got a problem with that or something? What's wrong with you? Why are you working for other people? Wasting your time, all that amazing talent and everything you got. Are you that lazy? I mean, really, come on now. It, it really takes you eight hours a day, 12 hours a day, 16 hours a day of hard labor to create some money? Now you listen to me. Watch what God say about that. Come on, let me let me, let me finish this. All right, because y'all y'all ain't hearing me. All right, let me finish. Let me finish talking about this. I ain't got no church today. I wish I had a church up in here. Come on, let's go. He says, "Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord, or who shall stand in His holy place?" He said, "He that have clean hands and a pure heart, who have not lifted up his soul in the vanity, nor sworn deceitfully." All right. So here's here's what his money comes in. Uh, if you want to receive the blessing from the Lord, watch what he says. You ain't lifted up your soul unto vanity or sworn deceitfully if you want to receive the blessing from the Lord. OK, so what does that mean? Here's why people ain't got no money. All right. Because they are uh, they vain and what they try to be slick. Are you hearing me? The all the reasons why people ain't got no money is because there's some slickness going on, some nickel slickness going on. All right. And they vain and what? They done sworn deceitfully. They saying stuff that's blocking their money. All right. I had a cat. And um, so he's in my in the house. And I told him, I said, listen, your price is, I think he said $63,000. I think that's what I told him. So your price is, I know it's 60 something. So we get in the house. I'm like, ah, oh, man, I can sell a house for 90000 I should have came into the crib. I never saw it. I don't be really looking at no houses. I'll be selling stuff virtually. Okay. So I was like, oh, man. I said, hey, his name is Jason. He was looking at me like Rick about to change the price. Why? Because he's thinking Rick done sworn deceitfully. All right. Why? Because when you tell somebody one thing and then you tell them something else, that means you are deceitful. OK, he said. And you know what? You ain't going to get nothing from God either. Because what the Bible say, it say, uh, if you want to receive something from God, make sure you ain't the person that's done sworn deceitfully. So I'm like, all right, OK, all right. All right. I said, you know what, bro? I said, I can look at you now. I know you're thinking I'm going to start cheating you, but I ain't going to do that. OK, I said, I told you what I told you. It is what it is. All right. I ain't worried about that little money. OK, God bless you, man. Call me back in two hours, though. I'm going to sell it to somebody else. Now, you know, Jason called back. What? He made like three hundred some thousand dollars fixing that house up. He wasn't about to blow that deal. You say, brother, Rick, come on now. You mean you lost thirty thousand bucks? Man, what kind of businessman are you? You should have readjusted, man, and, and went into another negotiation with everything. Thief! Thief! I ain't nothing but the spirit of a thief and a petty thief at that. Well, I want to steal 30 little measly thousand dollars. When I when I was when I was doing that deal, I wasn't making nothing but like a hundred thousand dollars a year. I made almost five million dollars over the last more than five million dollars over the last year and a half. Well, why? Because I don't cheat people. Are you hearing me? Why? I don't swear deceitfully. I don't tell nobody one thing and then come in and try to tell you something else on the back end. You dig what I'm saying? You know what? Give me five on the back end side. Ain't no five on the back end side up in here. But that's a movie from the 1970s, a black exploitation flick. Corny as hell, all right? Give me five on the back end side. <laughs> stop being so doggone cheap, all right? Stop being so, stop swearing deceitfully. Why? Because you ain't going to get nothing. He said, what? He just swear deceitfully ain't got nothing from God. That's why people broke. Are you hearing me? I'm talking about saved people too. I ain't saying you ain't, I ain't saying you ain't gonna go to heaven. I ain't saying you're gonna I'm talking about you ain't gonna have no money. All right. I'm talking about you ain't gonna get from God the blessing. You're not gonna get the blessing of the Lord from God. What blessing is he talking about? You ain't about to get wealthy. All right. Why? Because the wealth blessing is for people that tell the truth. It ain't for no nickel slick folk. You ain't finna get wealthy like that. Why back yourself up in a little petty corner like that? Listen to me. The reason people do that is because they don't understand the capacity of God. If they understood the capacity of God, they understand that what? You pass up that little money so you can get big money because God got big money. I don't want no little money. I got a big God. Why in the world you want to have a big God and have a little money? That don't make no sense. He 
His capacity is that what? He owned all the gold, all the silver, all the money, every, every dollar you can imagine, God owned it. Every penny on earth, God owns it. So why in the world would you paint yourself in some little petty corner by trying to be nickel slick? He said, you ain't going to get the blessing. I ain't hear what I'm saying. So I passed up that little money. I'm like, you can have that, Jay. Why? Because that ain't my money. That's your money. When you take somebody else's money, that means you're stealing. I ain't hearing me. I don't care how you put it, player. It's thievery. I ain't hearing me. So I said, you can have a little money, Jay. God bless you. I wasn't calling him back to my, hey, Jay, how much you sell that house for? Man, you know I gave you a good deal. You know what I'm saying? Can you kick a brother down a little bit more skin? Damn fair. Give you a little bit more cheddar. Brother Jay, come on down. Do you, brother? I wasn't begging that man for nothing. Once he bought the crib, that's his business. That's his money. I'm not walking around and trying to get up in that man's business, trying to get me some extra dollars and stuff. You know, it's a dude named Gehazi in the Bible tried that stuff. You remember my man, Gehazi? Gehazi? Y'all look up 2 Kings chapter 5. All right, and watch what because Gehazi. Gehazi is what? He is Elisha's, Elisha's boy. And what happened? Elisha tell this dude named Naaman, he said, go dip in the Jordan seven times. You want to get healed, player. All right? So my man went and dipped seven times and come back. And uh, and, and uh, he tried to give Elisha some money. So Elisha was like, I don't need your money, man. All right? Why? Because the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And he said, this is my free consultation with you. All right? Okay? So when you're giving out a free consultation, just because somebody makes some money off of you or something good happened from your free consultation, you don't start lying and acting like now it's a paid consultation. Are you hearing me? He told the dude when he first came now, I don't need your money. I don't want nothing from you. I'm just going to tell you how to get healed because this is a free consultation. All right. So going on out there in the Jordan player and get your stuff right. OK. When you come back, you're going to be looking like Denzel. You did. So my man come back in front of the door. He looking like Denzel. You dig what I'm saying? When he left out, he had all kind of um, um, uh, knots on his head and he was looking like Snow White, scary as hell, looked like Freddy Krueger. Now, nah, how you gonna leave? You're gonna leave the crib looking like Freddy Krueger and come back looking like Denzel. You know he wanted to break uh, Elisha off a piece of that Kit Kat bar. Now, you hear me? He's like, man, I need to pay this brother. I'm feeling good. All right. He said, Elisha. <laughs> he pulled out that long paper. Bing! He's like, Elisha. <laughs> Let me holler at you, bro. Elisha was like, man, I don't need that little money, man. Go ahead on. He's like, huh? He's like, go ahead on, man. I don't need your little money, man. God done blessed you. He took care of you. That was your free consultation, man. I don't change what I say. I don't swear deceitfully. I don't tell you one thing and then start acting like some other kind of way just because a little money involved. Man, go ahead on. Enjoy the rest of your life, baby. All right? So my man take off. What happened with Gehazi? Gehazi sitting back there. When he saw that bank, when, when a boy pulled that bank out, Gehazi eyes looked like one of them cartoon characters. You know, the cartoon characters, how the eyes go out and come back. Woo -woo. <laughs> that's, the way, that's the way Gehazi look. He's like, did you see that paper my man had? He's like, I know, Elisha tripping. He ain't, well, he ain't gonna let that man pay him. Oh, no, 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 no. See, Gehazi, you know, he ain't, he ain't understand that God on everything. He act like this is his business. He act like this is, this is he the one under control. He out of control though. Why? Because he want his hands on what don't belong to him. So now he can't get his hands on what do belong to him. And that's why people broke. Why? Because they swear deceitfully. So what do he do? He chased my man down the street. He like, hey, player, check it out. Uh, my man like, oh, who? Stop the, stop the carriage, man. Whoop, whoop, whoop. He had the carriage with them 20s that was flicking. Whoop, whoop, whoop. He said, stop the carriage, man. He said, my man rolling up on us. He said, what's up, dog? Uh, uh, Gehazi like, my man, what's up? He's like, look, um, Elisha, man, they was just talking, you know, and he told me to come out here and for you to break me off with a piece of that Kit Kat bar. A piece of that Kit Kat bar. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, I was like, what you want? He's like, man, can I get some of them tailor-made suits you got? He's like, for sure. What else you want, man? He said, man, just take whatever you want, player. He's like, cool. So he take the stuff and he go bury it. He dig like he finna get away with it. This is the way people behave. That's why people ain't got no money. People ain't got no money because I'm like, why are you taking a little petty stuff when God owned everything? I'm thoroughly confused. I'm like, what God are you serving? Are you serving a God, a $15 God? So why are you selling out for $15? God got all the money in the world. Why don't you go to him and get paid for real, baby? Are you hearing me? So my man come back to the crib. He buried his stuff. He running the crib. And he ended up whistling, trying to talk to uh, talk to Elisha like it's all gravy. He like, Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Elisha said, hey, hold on, hold on. Stop the radio for a second, dog. He said, where you been, man? He's like, oh, no. He said, I just went. I just been chilling like a villain, man. You know, just chilling like a villain. Elisha like chilling like a villain. He say, player, when you went down the street 
He said, didn't I go with you? He said, you already know I'm a prophet, dog. He said, you already know I know what happened before it happened. Why? Because God is always pre-serving me. All right. He already telling me in advance what's going to go, how things are going down. What make you think things change because of you? You're with me every day. I'm amazed at broke people. Broke people hang out around rich people and broke as hell. No, I just don't get it. I'm like, you, you're around a rich person every day. You see everything they're doing. And what you try to make your own moves. I'm telling you why people ain't got no money. Why? Because they're not tapping into the resource of God, even when they're around somebody else who is tapping into the resources of God. And they're standing right next to the person, watching the person get rich. I got plenty of people who hung out with me when I had no money and watched me get rich. I'm like, okay, y'all. All right. This is what I'm doing. I, I suggest you do the same thing. They're like, nope, I ain't going to do that. Nah, you know what? I got a better idea. Let me do some nickel slick stuff and try to get ahead. Ain't no shortcuts. All right. Ain't no shortcuts to getting wealthy. Get your butt up and get to work. Stop trying to be slick. You ain't finna get nobody owe you nothing. Are you listening to me? We the people of God. I never seen such lazy people in my life in the kingdom. Come on, y'all. You got to cut this mess out. How you, you don't you get rich by what? Consistent hard work. That's how you get rich. That's why when you start talking about money to church folk, they don't want to hear. It. All they want to hear is stuff about, I want, well, you know what? When I go to heaven, I'm going to sing and shout. Ain't going to be nobody that's going to turn me out. I'm like, what are you, what are you a heaven rapper? What the hell? I'm gonna, when, I, <laughs> when you get to heaven, you're going to do like you told. That's what you're going to do. You're up here talking about what you're going to do. When I get to heaven, I'm going to sing and shout. Ain't going to be nobody that could turn me out. But you're a heaven rapper or something like that. You still got that. You need to get rid of that attitude about talking about what everybody else is going to be doing. You need to get to a servant's mode. And start doing what? Just serving. And then God gave you some real lyrics to a song. You start making up your own stuff. Are you dig what I'm saying? So Gehazi, he come back to the crib thinking this is all gravy. Thinking he's going to get away with that stuff. Elisha told him, man, I followed you in my spirit when you went down the street. I saw everything. I saw how you tried to get that man to break you off a piece of that Kit Kat bar. I saw how you went and buried that stuff. He said, you know what? The leprosy that was on my boy that came over here looking like Freddy Krueger. It's on you now, player. And what happened? Gehazi was a leper to the day he died. Walking around like Freddy Krueger to the day he died over what? A couple of tailor-made suits? Are you kidding me? Listen, people of God. Snap out of it. All right? Listen. Listen to me good. You were born to be rich. God got plenty money. All the gold. All the silver. Everything you possibly get your hands on. Don't disqualify yourself. Why? Try to be nickel slick. The only reason you ain't got no money is because you're swearing deceitfully and you can't get the blessing. Don't separate yourself from the blessing. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Whatever you do, don't, don't sell out for little small amounts of money. Just go ahead on and let your yes be yes and your no be no and get out for your crown and make it rain like a hurricane. Are you hearing me? All right, no deceit. Everybody put ND in the chat. No deceit. Let's go. Come on, come on, come on. Through 2024, no more lying, no more nickel slick stuff. No more nigga not trying. God help me out and all that. Because uh, God ain't going to help you out, all right? You ain't got nothing coming, all right? E-N-D. Put it in the chat. No deceit. Come on. Hurry up. Let's go. Come on. Speak over your life. No more nickel slick deals. No more side deals, all right? E-N-D. Put it in the chat. Let's go. Hurry up. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. Hurry up. Speak over your life. Let's go. E-N-D. No more. No deception. No more nickel slick deals. Let's go. No more. Come on. No deception. Come on. No more nickel slick deals. Let's go. Y'all ain't moving fast enough. I must got some nickel slick Negroes listening to me because y'all ain't moving fast enough. I said put it in the chat. No more. No deceit. N-D. No deceit. N if I don't see at least 10 of them, I ain't teaching y'all nothing else. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. I need to see at least 10 people that's going to be honest for the rest of this year and stop all that lying nickel slick stuff and blocking all that money. All this money out here. Only reason you ain't getting it because you ain't you telling you ain't truthful enough. All right. All right. Let me see. I got one sun kisses. All right. I hear you, Mr. Bailey. All right. I see you, Latoya. All right. I see you, Verlin. Let's see. That's one, two, three, four, five. I see you, Pam. All right. Let's go. Who work? Who working over here? All right. Key make. I see this. That's uh, six. That's seven. That's eight. Shantese. Come on. I need two more, y'all. No deceit. All right, brother Eddie. Come on. I need one more, y'all. No deceit. And I'm finished teaching y'all this lesson. Let's go. One more person. Hurry up. Put Andy in the chat. Hurry up, y'all. I got my catch. I need. I got my mustard. Y'all need to catch up. Let's go. Hurry up. Let's go. Let's go. One more person. E and D. Let's go. Come on, one more person. Help yourself out. You ain't helping me out. You helping yourself out. I already deal honestly with folks. That's why I'm rich. I'm talking to you, I'm trying to help you get rich. All right. <laughs> all right. All right, Kevin. All right, brother Bailey. All right, let's go. So what's the last? So let's let's go on to to um what God got to say about this this wealth thing. He says um 
Uh, all right. So then the next scripture we got is um, Psalms 50. I'm sorry. Uh, this is Isaiah. All right. Now that's not what I want. All right. All right. All right. Here's, uh, here's another scripture about this wealth from God. Now, this is what God don't want you to do to get wealthy. Listen to God. This is the wealthiest dude in the world. He got this straight from God. All right. He got pre-served from God. God told him what to do. This is Solomon. And this is in Proverbs 23 and 4. And he says, labor not to be rich. He says, cease from thine own wisdom. He said, without set thine own eyes upon that which is not. For riches certainly make themselves wings and they fly away as an eagle towards heaven. So he said, labor not to be rich. All right. So what is this telling us? It's telling us, oh, you're a, you a dumb devil for trying to be rich. No, because that don't make sense. Because the Bible says that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and all in the dwell therein. And the Bible says that the wealth of the sinners is later for the just. And the Bible says that God gives us the wisdom to attain wealth. So obviously it ain't talking about that. So what does he mean? Labor not to be rich. He said, come up out of these slavery jobs. That's what he's telling. He's like, you laboring to get rich? He said, why are you setting your eyes on something that ain't going to never happen for you? Why? He said, because you ain't going to get rich laboring for nobody. It ain't enough hours in the day for you to get rich laboring for somebody else. Are you hearing me? He said, you better snap out of that nonsense. I didn't, I didn't create you to be laborers. I created you to be what? I've created you to be kings and queens and to do what? The wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. Not the wealth of the just laid up for the sinner. Who is the sinner? The laborers. You say, what kind of sin is it to labor, Ricky? Listen, you are not put here to labor. Our grandmamas and our granddaddies and our great grandfolks got treated like dogs. Work for 16 hours a day. And you mean to tell me in the 2024 you're going to be a laborer? Are you kidding me? With the internet out and all this money circulating around the world and you're going to work for 16 hours a day and be a complete nincompoop? Are you kidding me? Ain't nobody working 16 hours a day thinking about nothing except what? Getting some sleep and going back to labor again. To what? And you got your eyes on a whole bunch of money that don't belong to you. Let me read it to you one more time. Maybe you ain't never read the scripture. This is Proverbs 23 and 4. It says, labor not to be rich. Cease from thine own wisdom. Lord, have mercy. A cease and desist order. Are you hearing me? I'm sending y'all a cease and desist order in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Y'all better stop this foolishness laboring to get rich. How in the world are you going to get rich laboring like that? The Bible tells you, cease. What? Stop it. Cut it out. That's what Solomon is telling you. Why? He say because you're not going to get rich like that. All you're going to do is just what? Get more tired and more tired and more tired. And you're going to count a whole lot of money that don't belong to you. You know what I call it? The bank teller syndrome. BTS. What is the bank teller syndrome? All right. BTS. That means you count a whole bunch of money that don't belong to you. Somebody come in there and say, hey. I'm cashing my check. All right, sir. That's 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, $5,000. All right. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day. I'll be going to the bank today because I got to get 5,000 and 100 so I can pass them out. All right. So there you go bragging again, Ricky. Hater. Hater. You're just a hater because you ain't got $5,000 to pass out. But you ain't got $5,000 to pass out because you got that little nickel and dime job. All right. And the reason you got the nickel and dime job is because you're too lazy to open up a real business and do something to make real money. All right. You got BTS, bank teller syndrome. All right. Don't get mad at me. Say, Ricky, didn't you have a job before? Yes, I did. I had bank teller syndrome. Mm -hmm. I was working in a warehouse. What? $10 an hour with bank teller syndrome. All right. God was like, cease. I was like, let's see. I didn't quit. I was like, I was a faithful slave. I was like, I got bank teller syndrome. So what? I'm going to go to work every day. I'm going to increase my hours so I can increase my pay mm -hmm. and be a responsible guy. God was like, Negro, please. It ain't enough hours in a day for you to make no money at $10 an hour. What the heck? You need 3,500 hours a day to make a decent paycheck at $10 an hour. He said, you know what? I got a better idea for you, brother Rick. I'm like, what's that, Lord? He's like, I'm going to fire you. I'm like, dang, that's cold. He said, it ain't cold, Rick. 
That ain't cold. Because when I fire you behind, you're going to get rid of bank teller syndrome. You count. You ain't doing nothing but counting a lot of money. Don't belong to you. You're helping a whole bunch of other people get rich. You ain't going to ever have no wealth like that. I'm the God. What? Of all the money in the world, bro, you can trust me. He's like, you can trust me, bro. All right. Get up. You got a brilliant mind. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna waste your brilliant mind over here in a dusty warehouse. <laughs> it took me three weeks to quit coughing when I quit one of them joints. <laughs> took three weeks just to get the dust out my just to get the dust up out me. God was so good to me. He fired me like praying on Friday on my off day. I was like, bless your wonderful name, God. Why? He's like, man, you're a genius. You're supposed to be known all around the world. How in the world they gonna know about you all around the world in a warehouse? What the heck? Ain't nobody nobody know nobody in no warehouse. Man, you a slave, partner. All right. It's dark when you go to work, dark when you come home. And I got God was so good to me. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He got rid of my BTS. Are you digging what I'm saying? Bank teller syndrome. How about y'all? Anybody, anybody out there counting a bunch of money don't belong to you? Hmm? Are you happy about that? What? And the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and all that dwell therein, all the gold, all the silver. You mean to tell me you're going to waste, you're going to let your beautiful, wonderful, incredible, intelligent mind waste away in some plantation? Are you kidding me? Are you hearing me? Labor not to be rich. The Bible says it, all right? It says cease from that foolishness. Everybody put cease in the chat, all right? Cease sound a little bit better than stop. Stop sounds so doggone cold. Cease sounds better. Put cease, C-E-A-S-E. -E. Cease, all right? Cease from being broke. Are you hearing me? Put it in the chat. Come on, who's going to cease, all right? I ain't going no further. Y'all y'all taking too long for me. Y'all ain't moving fast enough today. Is everybody awake? I said, is everybody awake? All right. I've been talking for an hour and 10 minutes. Y'all still asleep? Come on. Cease. Put cease in the chat. Let's go. All right. Cease from being, cease from laboring. All right. About to throw, we about to turn these jobs in, baby. We got more sense than that. We can think for ourselves. Ain't nobody thinking for us. We can think for ourselves. We create our own stuff. Create our own stuff. We create our own stuff. We can create our own stuff. We do not have to work for people. We do not have to work for people. We can create our own stuff. We got brilliant minds. Are you hearing me? Cease from that foolishness. All right. Come on. I need at least 10 of y'all to cease. All right. I see one. I see two. All right. Anybody else going to cease? Oh, y'all got scared now. I mean, y'all got scared. What's going on? Everybody, what? Y'all must be sold out to them hard labor jobs. I, I, I don't see nobody else quitting soon. What's going on around here? Cease from that mess. Let's go. Who else want to cease? All right. I think I got three. Let me see how many ceases we got over here. Let me see how many Caesars we got over here. <laughs> see. All right. All right. Good boy. Good boy. All right. One, two, Harold. All right. I hear you, Harold. All right. Three. Uh, okay. Four, Shantice. I hear you. All right. Hey, Shantice, you work with me. Don't quit tomorrow. <laughs> No, Shantice ain't doing no hard labor. Shantice making a bank hanging and hanging out with her dad. All right, I hear you. I hear you, Latoya. All right. No, I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you, Latoya. All right. All right, we got it. Let me see. One, two. Let me see. All right. Okay, Verlaine, I hear you. Right, Eddie, I hear you. All right. One, two, three. All right, I think we got enough to continue. I think we got enough to continue. All right. Let's go on to so cease from hard labor. What else the Bible say? It says, without set thine eyes upon that which is not. Ooh, ooh, that which is not. Let me tell you something about God. God is rich, very rich. God doesn't expect you to live this life. Talking about, hey, you, you, this is this is what broke folks tell you, and what the devil from hell tell you. This, this definitely didn't come from the Bible right here. Now you know you can't have your cake and eat it too. All right. God says, How long are you gonna look at stuff that you can't have? What good is a cake you can't eat? Are you hit? Are you kidding me? Why would you just set a cake right in front of me? With the icing dripping all down the sides. All right. My, Sha my daughter Shantice is watching here. My ex-wife Sharon could really bake a cake. I'm talking about. We used, to have a, we used to have a bakery together. It was called Baker's Trust. All right. My favorite was a lemon cake. Make no sense. Make your toes curl. Slap everybody get on the whole block. Just bop, 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 bop. I'm talking about was so good. I'm talking about the I can't even describe how good that cake was. Now if she had made a lemon cake, and then I got to the crib and it's sitting there on the counter, looking good, dripping down the side. And I'm tired from a hard day's work. And I look, hey baby, made you a delicious lemon cake. I'm like, ah, let's go. She said, You can't touch it though. I'm like, what? You can just what? Look at it. I'm like, what the hell? 
I'm like, I got my knife out right now. I need three pieces. No, 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 no. It was just made to be looked at. Do you see how crazy that kind of doctrine is? That kind of idea is? That's what laboring does. These jobs, all they do is they just got, they just dangling carrots in front of y'all. They the ones eating the cake. They put the delicious cake out there and they tell you, you can't have none of it. Man, miss me with that. All right. What good is a cake I can't eat? I want my cake and I definitely want to eat it. That was the whole point of baking it. Y'all working for other people. Y'all ain't doing nothing but baking their cakes. Are you hearing me? All you're doing is baking their cakes, making other people rich. I don't know how many times I've been in a car with people driving Lyfts or Ubers. I'm in a car with them all, all the time, all year long. So we just started talking, you know, because, you know, they started a conversation. I like to join in. So I'm like, so I asked them, I'm like, so, you know, when are you going to make some real money? They say, well, this this job is great because I've got independence here. I'm like, how long have you been driving today? Oh, today, I think I, I did 10 hours today. I'm like, that don't sound independent to me. That sounds like some um, some slave hours. You 10 hours? He's like, yeah, 10 hours. But, you know, it's so interesting meeting other people. You work for, you work for Uber, baby. All right. You work for Lyft. What? Lyft is baking a cake. You ain't eating none of it. What? They eating all that cake. Are you kidding me? And they stocked them went from what they stock started at to where they stock is right now. They live in villas and mountains and carriages. Man, they living a life. And you sitting around here trying to tell me that you happy about building a cake for Lyft and a cake for Uber. And you're happy about it. A happy, a happy slave. Don't make no bank teller syndrome. Count a whole much. I say how much of that money you get every time they get a fare. Oh, we get a, a percentage of it. I'm like, yeah, huh, you get a percentage of the fare and they get the majority of the fare and they ain't driving no cars. All right. You don't want us driving a car. You're a bank teller. You just count money for somebody else. Are you hearing me? Bank teller syndrome. Cease from what? Laboring for other folk. Use your brain, brother. Use your brain, sister, and come up with some ideas and make some doggone money. Look, you say, what you doing with the wealth? What y'all be talking about on that wealth channel, Ricky? Getting wealthy? That's what we talk about, all right? And ain't no dummies getting wealthy. Ain't no lazy people getting wealthy. Ain't nobody getting wealthy who sit around and let somebody else pimp them. You're not getting wealthy. Are you hearing me? Snap out of it, all right? And cease from what? Your own wisdom. That's what Solomon said. He said, that's your wisdom. That ain't God's wisdom. Why? That leads us to the next thing, the wisdom of God. All right. So we've been talking today about the capacity of God. We talked about God's health. He's extremely healthy. Tap into that. You'll be extremely healthy. We just talked about God's wealth. He's extremely wealthy. Tap into his wealth and you will be extremely wealthy. Now, last thing, tap into God's wisdom because he wants you to be healthy, wealthy and wise. OK, so what is God's wisdom? All right. Well, we thank God that his wisdom and what it ain't. His wisdom is unsearchable. Let's see what Isaiah had to say about his wisdom. This is, let's go to Interstate I-40, all right? In fact, let's go to Interstate I-40, 28. That's right, Isaiah chapter 40, verse number 28. And the Bible says, has thou not known, has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, that he fainteth not, neither is weary, there is no searching of his understanding. All right, hold it right there, all right? Let me tell you something about God's understanding, about God's wisdom. You can't Google it, okay? You're like, what are you talking about, Ricky? Ain't no searching of his understanding. It ain't a search engine to search out the wisdom of God. God's wisdom is so profound, so phenomenal, so awe-striking until what? You have to have a relationship with God to get it. You can't search. This ain't no stuff like you can, hey, let me go find out online what? how to obtain the wisdom of God. Why? Because even when you read something that you got off a line, you still don't understand it. Why? Because God ain't given his wisdom to a person who would and gave their mind to him. Are you picking up what I put down? When you search, when you tap into the wisdom of God, it's not talking about reading something on a screen or reading something in the Bible. It's talking about a relationship. So when you get a relationship with God, then he does what? He reveals to you what other people are just reading, but it don't make no sense to them. How do you know? Because Philip had a relationship with God and he met this dude who was, a, who was an Ethiopian cat in the, in the uh, what, eighth, ninth chapter of Acts. And Philip meets the dude and the dude is reading the Bible. All right. So he's reading the wisdom of God. 
But what? He ain't understanding the wisdom of God. And just reading something don't mean nothing. In other words, he just, he on a Google search. All right. He just Googling, trying to Google the wisdom of God. So he reading it, right? That's the equivalent to being on a Google search. So here he is. And uh, and Philip show up. He say, what's happening, bro? Now this dude is the, he in charge of the, the queen's treasury. He's a eunuch. And he's in charge of the Ethiopian queen Candace's treasury. He's a baller and a shot caller. He's in charge of a whole lot of money, plenty of money. All right. But he ain't got the wisdom of God. He know, man, something is missing. I got some money. All right. I got good health, but I'm missing some wisdom. All right. He said, I got two parts of the trifecta. All right. I got health and I got money. But God wants you to be wise with health, money and wisdom. Why? Because two of those things are going to run out if you ain't got the last one. All right. So he said, man, he said, you know what you read? My man was like, no, nah, I don't know what I'm reading. He said, he said, how can I know what I'm reading? Except somebody come up here and help me. He said, man, uh, you know, he said, I'm gonna come up and talk to you. All right. He said, you know, if you really want to know, he's like, yeah, I really want to know. All right. He said, well, let me come on up here and break it down like a fraction to you. He said, this is Isaiah. And he talking about Jesus. And he talking about how Jesus is going to come and save the whole world. Matter of fact, Jesus then already came and left. And I'm one of his disciples right now. And we are running around here happy as all get up. You did because we got joy unspeakable and full of glory. And we live in that life. Are you hearing me? Oh, man, it's like, what? He said, I want to live that life too. He said, what was that you were talking about, that baptism stuff? He said, here goes some water right here. He said, let's go down, baby. Take me to the water right now. And what Philip do? He baptized the dude right there, what? And gave that man the wisdom that he needed. Why? Because your money don't mean nothing without no wisdom. And your health don't mean nothing without no wisdom. You need to be healthy, wealthy, and wise. And the wisdom of God, you can't Google it. All right? It has to be what? Absorbed. What? Why? Because God have to put his spirit inside of you for you to have his wisdom. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Bible says as many who have the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And then the Bible says that the spirit of God is who leads you, what? In the all truth. That's where your wisdom comes from. It comes from acquiring the spirit of God. You're like, well, brother, I'm a pretty wise person without the spirit of God. All wisdom, the Bible says, all wisdom that coming from above, that come from God is first peaceable and then it's pure. You know, if you got God's wisdom because it gives you peacefulness and it makes you, it gives you a pure mind. Are you listening to me? That's the wisdom of God. The devil got wisdom too. All right. It ain't like, it ain't like you ain't no wise person. Just be, It ain't just like everybody's walking the earth. Uh, like the devil got a bunch of dummies walking the earth. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The devil got a whole bunch of wise people walking the earth too, but it ain't God's wisdom. I'm talking about God's wisdom is different because it brings peace. It brings joy. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And it and it overrides anything that the devil got to offer because the devil stuff is counterfeit. Are you hearing me? Jesus said, listen to me. He said, everybody that came before me is a thief and a robber. All right. He said, a thief, they don't come for nothing but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He said, but I came that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. In other words, I came to give you that wisdom that comes from above, which is first peaceable, and then it's pure. And it's what gives you joy. It gives you joy and wisdom and money and help the whole shebang. Why? Because God, like I am the fullness of everything. He said, I come in the volume of the book. What's the volume of the book? He said, man, I come to fulfill everything. I'm the fullness of life. And you can have it too. If you do what? If you tap into God's what? His fullness of health, his fullness of wealth, and his fullness of wisdom. Are you picking up what I'm putting down? Let me read you a couple of more things about wisdom right quick. All right. This is what this is what um, Jesus told Peter. Peter, uh, let me tell you, because wisdom has to be revealed. It can't be Googled. All right. So. Jesus asked everybody, he said, man, who do, who do people say that I am? All right. And uh, and uh, so his disciples said, uh, you know, some, of you, some people say you John the Baptist. Some folks say you Elias. Some people say you Moses. They tripping, man. They calling you everything. All right. They calling you everything, but uh, probably calling you everything but a child of God around here. You know, they got a, couple, a few more choice words for you. Some people calling you a blasphemer. And they tell you some people calling you uh, that you healing folks by, by Beelzebub. They got a whole bunch of, you know. Uh, they tell, they, um, they're saying a whole lot of stuff about you, Lord. All right. So Jesus said, well, what do y'all say about me? So Peter said, man, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Man, you know what Jesus told him? I can see Jesus smiling right now. He said, Pete, he said, flesh and blood didn't reveal that to you, bro. He said, but my father that's in heaven. In other words, wisdom is something that you acquire from God. It ain't something that you get from reading books. It ain't something that you get 
by, by Googling people. It's something that you get from God. And then God gives you the wisdom as you read the books and as you read this and as you read that and as you investigate this and as you investigate that, then you see it from a different perspective. Why? Because the wisdom of God is teaching you what you read. Now you hear me? The man did not understand what he was reading until Philip, what? Until the wisdom of God came along and told him what to do. And some of us, some of the reasons why we having uh, health problems and wealth problems, the reason is because we got a wisdom problem. And quite often wisdom comes in the form of people coming in to teach you the wisdom that you don't know. So as you go through the rest of 2024, I want you to operate at your highest capacity. And for you to operate at your highest capacity, then that means you really need to tap into God, tap into his health because he's healthy and he'll teach you how to have a healthy physical and mental life. Tap into his wealth because he's wealthy. He got all the money in the world and don't you settle for no little side deals and, and, and accept being broken and poor and having a cake that you can't eat. And then finally, he's wise. He's, his wisdom is beyond comprehension, beyond understanding, and you cannot get it by simply Googling stuff. You got to have a personal relationship. All right. So I'm going to pray for you that that's exactly what you do, that you get a personal relationship with God if you don't have one. And if you have one, then God to do what? Increase that personal relationship so that our capacity to be able to do whatever it is that he wants us to do will increase as well. Come on, bow your heads. All right. If you're a sinner and you don't know God and God is not your savior and you ain't got no relationship with him, then you repeat these words. Lord, I am a sinner. And I'm sorry about my sins. Lord, I want to be healthy. I want to be wealthy and I want to be wise. But Lord, I don't have your wisdom. I don't know how to discern life. I'm doing things on my own. I'm just trying to make the most sense out of it. But Lord, I feel lonely and I feel abandoned. And Lord, I feel helpless. Lord, I, don't, I feel like I don't have the power I'm supposed to have, the guidance that I'm supposed to have, the confidence that I'm supposed to have, and the clarity of mind I'm supposed to have. Lord, I don't know what direction to go in, but I'm very interested in going in the right direction. So interested until I repent of my sins right now. And I'm asking you to be my Lord and to be my Savior and to be my guide. I believe you when you say that everybody that came before you is a thief and a robber. And I'm tired of being robbed and stuck up. So, Lord, I'm asking you right now to come on in. I'm giving my assets to you, Lord. I'm passing on what I have to you. I trust it in your hands. Now, Lord, just tell me what to do. I believe that you rose from the dead on the third day from the grave and that you are the son of the living God. And I commit my life and my heart over to you. Now, Lord, just tell me what to do. And I promise you, I'll follow you all the days of my life in Jesus name. Amen. God bless you for that prayer. Because of that prayer, you all, it's on and cracking now. You're about to, about to rain like a hurricane up in your life. You're about to start seeing God for who he is. And now you'll understand how to move around and how to maneuver in this life. Your health is going to change. Your wealth is going to change and your wisdom is going to change because you just freely gave yourself over and volunteered over to let God help you. All right. This last prayer is for all of us. And no matter if you just met God a few minutes ago or if you've been knowing him a long time, come on, let's pray for our capacity with God. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we pray unto you today like Jabaz prayed. Lord, we're asking you to enlarge our territory. We're asking you, Lord, to enlarge our capacity to be able to help people, our capacity to be able to be a blessing and uh, our capacity, Lord, to be able to do things at a much higher level than we've been currently able to do it. We know you have all the resources and we acknowledge you as a God who has no limits. And we want to thank you for being so willing to help us with all you got to offer us. You are an amazing God, a phenomenal God. We acknowledge you today and bow down to you and we give you the honor. We give you the glory for having such incredible power and such incredible love in an amazing ability and willingness to relinquish to us what it is that you have. Now, Lord, we're asking you for the fullness of health. We're asking you for the fullness of wealth. And we're asking you for the fullness of wisdom, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless all of you. It's been a plum, please, and pleasure, as well as a privilege. I love you all. Ain't nothing you can do about that. Have a phenomenal, fantastic day. And remember that stellar is a stellar day. Now go on out in the fullness of God and make it rain like a hurricane. God bless you. Have an awesome day.